Hey folks, this is Richard Ross with AccessLearningZone.com. I don't do this often, but every now and then I come across a web page or an article or a post somewhere that is just so blatantly wrong about Microsoft Access that I owe it to the Access community and to people who might not know much about Microsoft Access but are considering it to debunk these myths. And this is a page that I found called Five Limitations of Microsoft Access. It's a couple of years old, but I come across pages like this all the time. And of course, pages like this are usually promoted by companies that are trying to sell an alternative product. So they obviously have a motivation to get people to move away from Microsoft Access. Now, the first item it says is access is not available over the internet. All right, the biggest limitation is it's not groupware. Now, while this is technically correct, access by itself can't be used over the internet. There are lots of different options to use your access database and your access data over the internet. You can upgrade your backend to SQL Server. You can use SharePoint. You can use something like Access Database Cloud. There's lots of different alternatives, and I'll be posting some links to some alternatives down below after the video. Calling Access a glorified spreadsheet is just someone who doesn't understand that Access is a full relational database. Now, this one is just plain wrong. Access is not suitable for team use. Uh, I don't understand how you could possibly write this. Access is not designed for single use. Access is the best local area network database front end you can possibly get. All right, if you're a small business, if you have a small team, you got 20, 30 people in an office that need to share data, Access is a great program for that. That's probably the best solution for a small team like that. Now, yes, there is a limit, 255 users, sure. And if you got that many users, you should upgrade your back end to SQL Server, but your front end can still be Access. That's what a lot of people don't understand. Access is more of a database design program, all right, than it is a database server. It's not a database server. But you can use an Access front end with a back-end database server like SQL Server. And if your database is terribly slow with 5 to 10 users, then you just don't know how to build a proper Access database. I've set up companies that have 20, 30 users concurrently running an Access database with no problems whatsoever. And with SQL Server as the back end, I've had companies with 200 users simultaneously working. That's not the problem. All right, only suitable for small databases. Yes, there is a two gigabyte limit per file. Per file. You can have a separate table in each file. You can have a two gigabyte customer table, a two gigabyte employee table, two gigabyte product table. And I've got hundreds of thousands of records in my personal databases. And yeah, they're split across multiple backends, but that's not a limitation. And again, if you've got that big of a table, you should be using a database server, but this doesn't affect the use of the front end. Access is still a perfectly suitable front end, no matter how big your back end tables are. It has been observed that access slows down considerably when data exceeds. No. No, you just don't know how to build a database then. Access ties you to Microsoft Windows. Now, this one is true. This is a valid limitation. Access only runs on Windows. But if you've got a Mac or Linux or whatever, you can still remote PC into something that you know is running Access. You can use a virtual machine. There's all kinds of different alternatives. You can run par parallels. All right, I'm not a Mac fan myself, so if you are a Mac user, yeah, you're not going to enjoy my classes. <laughs> but if you do want to use Access, if your company uses Access and you're a Mac user, you can still remote in to the company access database. There are alternatives. All right, access is not user friendly. That's not a that's not a valid limitation. You are completely incorrect, sir. It is a it is an extremely user friendly database. Again, I posit that you don't understand access, you don't know how to use access, and you're just being a hater. Access does not look clumsy and clunky compared to new no-code applications. In fact, Access was the original no-code application. You can build a great Access database with zero code, but then you can also add code to it. That's why it's it's great for all users of all levels, beginner, intermediate, expert developers. Access can be used by everybody. Now, there are some valid criticisms of Microsoft Access. I've got a few myself. Access isn't perfect, right? I'm not the uh, I'm not here, you know, evangelizing a perfect product. But the criticisms this guy raised are mostly not valid. But I do have a page here. You can go and check it out. And I list all of my criticisms of access and ways around most of them. All right, watch my video. I've got another benef uh, benefits of Microsoft Access video here you can watch. But, you know, there are some issues, right? Some upgrade issues. 
Oh, the big one. Everyone always says, I have read somewhere that access is being discontinued. No, it's not being discontinued. All right. Uh, web apps was a thing. They tried web apps for a while. That didn't work where you can actually make access web pages out of your database. But again, if you want to upgrade your database and use it over the internet, there are options. You can use SQL Server. You can use all kinds of different all right, I talk about the two gig max limit, multi-user limitations. Yeah, the, it's, access is great for a small office. If you got 10, 20 employees, 30 employees, there's no problems running an access database, split database solution in that type, type of environment. I've set up hundreds of them over the past 30 years. And if access is slow on your network, it's probably your network. <laughs> Every time I went into a company where they were complaining their database was slow, I did a test on the network and just general file transfers were slow. They had problems with their cabling or they needed to update their routers or their network cards, all kinds of different stuff. All right, so that's all. That's my rant for today. But whenever I come across a hater like this, I just have to debunk it. There's, these limitations are not valid limitations. The only complaint he has that's valid is that it's not usable on a Mac. But yeah, okay, it's not a Mac application. Sorry. <laughs> I'll put a link to his article down below if you want to go read it for yourself. And, of course, if you have any comments, I'd like to hear what you have to say. Post them in the comments section down below. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.